Hello Loomers, this is Chidero and I'm here today with a, a new design. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I was playing around with my hook and had some beads already on some bands and voila. So um, it's super, super easy and I've been kind of looking for some dude bling bracelets. I think I do like entirely too many bracelets um, for girls or women and need to kind of switch it up some, huh? So this one here, it has every single band has a bead on it. So you will need a lot of bling. I believe it's 45 on this bracelet alone. So this is a full length bracelet. Um, these beads I got at Michael's and they're heavy. So which means it's going to stretch out more. Um, so let me show you an example. Uh, these beads, these are um, they're from Bead Gallery. This is the brand. And this is an example of what the beads will look like at the store. They'll come on two little strings. They are about six um, millimeters in size. And on the tag it says 10 inch, 25 centimeters. So that's what you want to look for. That size right there is what I used in this original bracelet. Uh, another one that I have found are these. They're more like f they're a flat uh, head bead and also bead gallery. And this one says 8 inch 20 centimeters. And another option is they have at Michael's, they are glass pearls. So on like a, in their um, jewelry department, they have like a little island and I think it has four or three sections on it, but they have like a whole row uh, from top to bottom of pearls, every color you can think of. And I think three or four different sizes. So these are one, I think, I believe $1 a strand. I, I might be mistaken, but Anyway, these are options and I know I get a lot of questions on where I buy and what size and whatnot. So I thought I'd share with you a few options. So another example that I have made, which I love this one. Um, I used these, um, they're like a clear bead with a black line in the middle. So they're really awesome. But I wanted to see what they look like um, with a different color scheme. So I put the medieval black on the outside and then the white on the inside. But just the look of the, the bead, um, it's super awesome. I, I hope you can get a good look at it even though we're um, it's on film, but these are super cool. I got these at Hobby Lobby. I believe there's like a little tiny section on top that had like eye beads. I, I believe that's where I found them. So go ahead and check those out. And you can definitely find everything I've just mentioned at Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, Michaels, Amazon.com. Um, just Google if you can't if you can't buy in person, and I guarantee you, you will find what you're looking for. So today, I am going to use. You know how great I am with names, but these are Rainbow Loom LE bands, and they're like a neon orange. I don't know if it's like zest orange. But anywho, they are the limited edition. And these beads that I have on here 
are about four centimeter or four millimeter beads. So they're two millimeters smaller than the original one that I've used, but I think that they will work. So again, my whole goal was to make dude bling, okay? Need to make more guy bracelets out there. You know, like crazy just might work on Instagram. Her husband's like, woohoo, wears all her bracelets. She matches them to his shirts. We have Jay's Alvarez, you know, we got Rob from Justin's Toys, which you guys need to help me because Rob needs to have some bling on to represent, right? So anyway, I'm just trying to stick with, um, you know, I don't want to say anti-pink, but, you know, just some masculine colors. So you can use any band of your choosing. It does not have to be an limited edition or medieval. It can be opaque or silicone. And you will need about 45 at least um, beads on bands. So if you need to go ahead and put your beads on your bands, go ahead and stop right here and do so. And you can meet me back. So I have only about 30 of what I had in these little silver beads. So I can't actually do a full bracelet, but I think we'll be okay. So we're going to start out and I got a new hook. And of course I can't find anywhere a double-ended hook as much business as I give these craft stores around here but anyway this is a 3.25 millimeter size hook I find it really great for doing the um, hook only designs for it gives you uh, the length that it will spread out I have never had issues with my rainbow loom hook which I do prefer to use the rainbow loom products as they're sturdier and um, more durable uh, but this length right here is just a little tad short it can still be done but today I choose to use this hook here so we're going to triple cap band you can double cap band but to me it flaps around so I'd rather just do a triple and then we're going to take two bands Place them on our hook and put that cap band. Oops. Put the cap band on those two bands. I'm still learning how to use the crochet hook versus the rainbow loom hook. And the crochet hook, it has a smaller head on it, so I'm learning. Okay, so once you have your cap band in the middle, and place the other side of your bands on your hook. So this is only the beginning, um, just my preference because um, sometimes if you bead too early it can kind of go and not to look not look too pretty when it goes next to your cap band. So I prefer to use just plain bands. So from here on out every single band that we use is going to be a beaded band. So what I'm going to do has been done a billion times. It's basic hook only design techniques. So you shouldn't have a problem. It's so super easy. We're going to take our beaded band and we're going to put it on our hook right there. And then we're going to slide it underneath just the first two bands on our hook and place it back upon itself like that. So we're going to take it off, or if you have a double ended, slide it down. And we're going to turn it around like so, and do the same thing on the other side. So the trick here is the two bands that you're placing on the beaded band, we want to keep these two bands right here on the left side of your bead. Okay, I do not prefer to have them like that. So keep your eye out to make sure that they stay to the left side of your bead, which is the side closest to your hook. 
we're going to place the other side back up on our hook you may have to do some adjusting just to make sure that the two ends do stick on the inside here like that okay so our next step is we're going to cross the two center bands so I'm going to take the third band and I'm going to cross it over the second band and make an X like that and then we're going to take off this end see how those beads already slid over or the bands already slid over I choose to use LE bands for the tutorial because they're smoother I thought maybe it would be quicker to show how to make this so we're going to take another beaded band we're going to stick that on our hook and we're going to carefully make sure that these two bands stay crossed slide it underneath this band here okay now the band that's next to the bead here that's the crossed band we need to slide that to the right side of the bead okay so we put that band back up on our hook and then the first one up there as well so if you can see this is exactly why it's important to make sure that those bands are crossed because it makes that X shape in front of your bead but importantly it also connects the two sides together so this is what you should have so far and this is exactly what your bracelet's going to look like the whole way up so this is what we're going to do repeat this step there's basically I think three steps so one grab your beaded band and we're going to take the first two bands on our hook slide them over and put this end back making sure that the two bands that we slid on are to the left of this bead we're going to turn our hook around and repeat grabbing another beaded band I'm going to take the first two slide it on top of that band and place it back on your hook so again making sure that these bands are to this one is to the right the inside of this bead and this one the inside of this bead okay now that we have four bands on our hook this is the time that we're going to cross the middle bands so I'm going to slide this down a bit because it's easier to kind of grab some leverage to pull this over like so so, and if this one comes off it's okay because it's not going anywhere it's got a bead on it you might have like a totally easier way to do crossing the bands but this is just what I've come up with so we take another beaded band place that on our hook and we're going to slide that X onto our new band like so and so what I like to do is you can see that this band right here that's the cross band so this band see they just uncrossed so if they uncross you can kind of maneuver it but we want to stick that on the right side of our bead just like that and as I mentioned that's what gives us our cross look place the other two ends back up on our hook so as you're going along it's going to be common like right here 
those bands that I said I'd like to be placed on the inside of our bead. They've already kind of came out. So we just take the bead and push the bands back in and push them back in on this side as well. Give it a tug. This is what you should have so far. Okay, so let's try it again. Take a beaded band, loop on top the first two bands that are on our hook, place it back. Okay, take our hook out. And turn it around so we can repeat on the opposite side placing a band with the bead only taking the first two and placing it back on our hook like that so once we've done that this is when we cross the two center bands like so. We take the right end off and let it dangle. Take another beaded band, place that on our hook, carefully slide over the two X bands over top of the beaded band, like so making sure that they don't uncross and we pull that first one over top to the other side of the bead see as I was trying to do that they uncrossed but it's not a big deal because you just want to take the one on the left and you want to place it on the right. So it's kind of easy to maneuver the bands around the beads and it gets easier when you get further along. But you always know if you've got it right because you will have that X shape right there in front of your bead and you will have these bands here on the inside of these beads just like that all right let's try it again take a beaded band loop over the first two on top ensuring they stay to the inside of the bead and turn your hook around so we can repeat the same process putting the first two on top like that now we're going to take the center ones and we're going to cross and make an X like so take this one off of our hook grab another beaded band slide that X onto the beaded band making sure that your bands are still crossed in the middle and then taking the first band, placing it over your bead and putting the remaining bands back up on your hook. Just like that. So that's pretty much it. It's so simple. It really, really is simple. Uh, the only thing is, you know, one, making sure that um, you're, you know where the 
bead placement and band placement should be um, over throughout the design and three looping techniques I believe is all it is. So step one, take these two first ones and loop it over. Take your hook out, turn it around. And step two is to do the same on the opposite side. Place back on our hook, making sure that the bands are to the inside of your bead. And step three is to cross these center bands like that and leave the right side off your hook. Grab another beaded band and slide those X bands on top making sure they are still crisscrossed and place the first one to the right of the bead, placing the other ends. We gotta be careful they don't come apart. And there you have it. So, again, some maneuvering to keep those beads on the inside and making sure that you have the X in the middle. So super easy, super awesome. I like this orange. I think it's awesome. It is easier to do it with the LE bands, but they do like to slide around your beads more so than the other um, bands. They are so much easier to slide on the hook. When I was doing the medieval bands, they're sticky on one side, so it was kind of a little bit challenging to maneuver it. So we'll do this a couple more times. Bring the first two over, keeping it to the left of your bead. Turn it around. And repeat with the remainder two. Like that. Now we're going to crisscross, bringing the third over the second, like so. And we can take this last one off, get another beaded band, and slide that X over our hook, making sure they are still crossed, bringing that first band over to the right of the bead, placing that back on our hook, and the last one up on our hook. So as you can see, these bands fell to the right of the bead, so we need to push them back so they're in the center. And this one over here as well, just push it over your bead, ensuring it is in the center. And as always, if you have this x You've done it correctly. All right, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. Making sure we're grabbing all the bands 
and they are not crisscrossed. From another band, these two bands on top, stopping at the bead, placing the end on. Pushing this a little bit closer so I have an easier time Xing my bands. So I'm taking the third, putting it over the second, creating an X. Slide this closer to the end, take the right side off, grab another beaded band, carefully, which I like to like shake my hook back and forth, it kind of helps them smooth on like that. Pull this first band over your bead, back on your hook, and back on your hook. Hmm. What did I do? Ah, I did nothing, see? This band fell to the left of the bead. And this sucker needed to go... Uh-oh, see? They uncrossed. So, let me go back. Okay, so this one needs to go over that side. And then this one needs to cross and go to the opposite side. However you can do it. Alright, let me take this out. I'll try this again. This is a little bit more difficult with the LA bands because they are slippery. I think I have an extra band up here, huh? Trust me, this is so not difficult to make, but sometimes when you're trying to teach, it's a little bit slower than if you were just looming in your lap. Okay, so we want to crisscross the center bands. Take this right end out. Stick that cross And there we have it. So definitely a little bit more hands-on work needed. Possibly if you're using the limited edition bands. Because like I said, they're round and they're so flexible that they like to move around a lot. So not a hard thing to fix. So this is what your bracelet should be looking like. I love it. I love the color. 
and I like the beads. I think it's pretty dark. So, if you don't have the pattern down yet, feel free to rewind and you can go back and look over my previous instructions. And when you're through with that, you can come back and I will show you the simple closure. Okay, so hopefully by now you are at the end of your bracelet and it is the length of your wrist. Mine is just a tad short, so I have two options. One, I can go back to the store and purchase more of these beads, or I can just simply add a single chain to the back of it. But either way, I'm going to show you a couple ways that we can close this up. So we're going to take just a plain band and just slide all four, everything that's on our hook, onto that plain band and bring it back up. Just like that. Which is similar to the way this end is. Okay, so this is just a simple close as you would any other bracelet. But, <clears throat> excuse me I wanted to show you these jump rings now jump rings there's jump rings and there's o-rings the jump rings are for chain mail bracelets which are like the ones that you see that are like this and they're all like linked together because they all have a cut in them so you can bend them this is a thick one it's called a heavy gauge and this one here is very thin which is just a regular or thin gauge jump ring. This one is about 12. This one's about 8 size. So I'm going to use this one because I don't have any pliers or anything on me. You're going to need some type of uh, tool to help you twist that open. And this one here is so thin that I can do it just like that. So you always want to bend it either forward or back because all that's doing is opening up that gap right there and it's not um, deforming your circle. So just like a C-clip, you want to take that opening and you just want to slide one side of each band into that opening and then slide it back exactly how you opened it you close it carefully slide it back to position so it meets the same side and take this out like so so it's pretty important that that is closed up really well because we don't want our bracelet to slip in between that hole right there. So if you were going to use a jump ring, you would not have closed it yet and you would have put this end on. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Make sure these bands are at the end. Slide it back make sure your bracelet's not twisted and here I have a triple cap band so I want to make sure I stick it through all three of those bands and then simply push that right side back to meet like that and then give it a, a squeeze to make sure that it is closed. Close enough together where our bands can slip out. So that is a, <clears throat> excuse me, one option you can do to close up your bracelet because you have so much bling on it or dude bling 
um, looks better than a C-clip, but obviously you can take those bands and merely put a C-clip on it the same as you would any other bracelet. So there you have it. There is our newly created Epic Sphere bracelet. I hope you enjoyed it. I totally had a blast making this bracelet. Um, I think it's super awesome. Uh, and it's easy and there's so many possibilities so this is my dude bling that I'm trying to put out here there is nothing in the rule book that says that this has to just be dude bling obviously you know there can be designs out there that are gonna have pretty girl bling on it and whatnot which is totally cool but if you can figure out another way to make a dude bling definitely uh, try it and have a look out for our dudes and let them wear some of this as well so thanks for watching and if you liked making this as much as I did please give me a thumbs up and if you are interested in following along and seeing about some more tutorials that will be uh, uploaded soon go ahead and subscribe. So once again, thanks for watching. Bye.